Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551, and I am back with a My Choose Set video for this week for July 2nd to the 8th. Um, I hope you guys had a enjoyable and happy 4th of July, whether it's spending time with friends, families, having a barbecue, seeing the fireworks and all. So hopefully you guys had a happy and safe 4th of July. And we're still waiting to hear that judge in terms of the FTC versus the Activision, Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. We, I thought we were gonna hear it this week. It doesn't sound like it is, but who knows? I mean, they could announce, for all we know, they could announce it while this video is being recorded. Um, if anything happens, I'll try to add it in. But for right now, it doesn't it doesn't look like, at least at this time, or at least as this recording of this video, we're, we're going to get a verdict, at least not yet, though. But I will def definitely keep my eye on it I, I'll, for that, though. But anyway, we got um, four stories to cover, including rumors about the possibility that Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag could be getting a remake treatment. Um, not so great news for those who are fans of the Banjo-Kazooie series or and the F-Zero series. Um, the Gollum game, which unfortunately was so bad that it basically... Um, the studio that behind it has decided to change, go a different direction when it comes to dealing with video games going forward. And some interesting rumors popping up in regards of the Switch successor or Switch 2, however you want to call it. Um, if you're interested in where I got a source of these information, I'll have links down in the description down below of this video so when you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get started, I like to do what I like to call the quick my two cents stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details. Um, the first one is, is that Capcom has sort of provided a promising, somewhat vague, but promising update in terms of the um, Mega Man franchise, though. It seems that they are looking at, seem that they're not, you know, it isn't dead or anything like that, but they have nothing to announce at this time. They sort of have something similar with the um, Onimushu series and all. And honestly, given how well Mega Man 11 did, I really think Capcom should do another Mag Mega Man game. Hell, I mean, even a Mega Man, you know, like X, um, I think like an X9 would be great for a lot of people. Or even, dare I say, they actually do either like a Mega Man Legends 3, bring that back to life, or at least remake the first and second uh, Mega Man um, Legends game. So it doesn't seem like Capcom's abandoning it, but it looks like there's nothing to announce at this time. Uh, we've learned that Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown has been delayed. Supposedly it will be out next year, and no word in regarding, um, this, regarding the Switch version um, at this time, though. Um, I am curious to see um, how this game will play out. I played some of the uh, past test driving games. I mean, they're not bad or anything like that, but I mean, they're not going to blow Forza or Gran Turismo out of the water in any shape, in any form, to be exact. Um, we also learned that Jeff Grubb has re has reconfirmed that believes that the Final Fantasy IX remake is in development at Square Enix. This has sort of been flowing around for quite some time, whether or not this game will get the um, remake treatment or not, though. Um, there has, it's supposedly, I've heard stories back and forth about ranging this spotted on like some of the NVIDIA's, you know, leaked list or anything like that. And as far as how this game might play, though, from what I understand, it doesn't seem to be or at least, at least from what I've been hearing, doesn't seem to be aiming towards the direction of it, like the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is more towards, you know, the action RPG slash gameplay being somewhat similar to the Kingdom Hearts franchise and so forth. So, like, this one might still maintain the turn-based RPG approach that it's, um, you know, the Final Fantasy games mostly have been um, known for. But again, like anything... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right now, nothing's been confirmed at this time. At the moment, um, Square Enix is focusing on, you know, the Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two at this moment, though. So we're probably not going to hear anything, at least not until basically they conclude with the Final Fantasy um, VII Remake. I still think that um, I still think um, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy VIII should get the remake treatment, at least how I see it, um, to be exact. Though, and we've also been hearing, you know, Final Fantasy X possibly getting the remake treatment. We also learned that the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, at least for the Nintendo Switch, um, it will be able to be purchased separately, though. As some of you may know, while there is a physical version, it is going to require somewhat of a download for a lot of the contents or anything like that. So this might not be a bad thing for those who just want to maybe download just 
you know, just a certain Pacific game. Like maybe there's one Metal Gear Solid game you like and the other ones you don't. So not a bad choice for those who are thinking of picking up Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, especially if you're planning to get it for the um, Nintendo Switch. We also learned that EA Sports um, FC, this is the different um, take on EA's, you know, soccer since they don't longer have the FIFA license. It's set for September 29th. Um, Basically, um, right now, that's the date that they're aiming for. No word in regards to the Switch version, but given EA's support for the Switch and given their history of releasing, um, let's see, the bare minimum when it comes to sports titles to the Switch, particularly, you know, the FIFA ones, I'm not holding my breath on this one, um, to be exact. So, I mean, great for soccer fans, but I'm not, I just, this one will probably be a pass for me. And sad news, we learned that basically that one of the creative directors um, called named by the name of Emily Emmy Morals has unfortunately passed away at age 40. He basically contributed, from what I understand, to several titles like Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends, and was currently working on you know Beyond Good and Evil 2, which unfortunately that game has sadly fallen into um, development hell at this time. So unfortunately he has um, passed away, and my heart goes out to his friends and families. Um, out there um, to be exact and in the movie and TV show part of the My Two Cent um, we also learned that the Super Mario Brothers movie will be streaming on Peacock it will be aiming for like an August um, uh, I mean next month to be, to be exact um, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't decide to bring it early considering um, the fact that I would assume that this will go straight to the Peacock Network um, right away. I mean, not to mention, although at the time, the movie was doing extraordinarily well um, at the box office. So apparently for those who are looking to try it out for the streaming service, um, basically it is preparing to come, it will be out next month for Peacock's um, network or Peacock streaming service. Uh, we also learned that Indiana Jones box box office and the dial of destiny has so far made around 85 million at the box office um especially during july 4th the movie has not exactly performed as well at the box office as some have thought would be some of it might be in terms of the market it might have been way over budget and that is a possibility though but in either case it is a little bit unfortunate because i thought the movie was better than kingdom of the crystal skulls i mean not overtaking the original Indiana Jones movies, but definitely an improvement over Kingdoms of the Crystal Skulls. And I thought um, Harrison Ford still got it, even at the age of 80, though. But yeah, very unfortunate that Dial of Destiny isn't doing um, very well um, at the box office. Um, we also learned that Benedict Crumpton has talked about his return to the MCU with several upcoming movies. Um, it is believed to be he might be doing a Doctor Strange 3, which wouldn't surprise me considering how well that did at the box office. And given the way that movie ended, though, I'm not shocked if we'd see a Doctor Strange 3 um, actually um, happen, though, although he could make an appearance in other um, Marvel movies as we have seen that um, before, though. But I, my money is on that we might see it. We'll see a Doctor Strange um, 3. We also saw some photos of Ryan Reynolds playing uh, playing Deadpool in the upcoming third entry into the Deadpool movie. And for what it looks like, it seems the costume that he's wearing is more in line, maybe a little bit more in line with the comics than, say, the first two um, Deadpool movies, though. But in either case, I am looking forward to seeing his interaction with... Um, with Wolverine and everything and that and his in his premiere in the MCU and how he's going to how he's going to talk about how he entered the MCU and all so I am definitely um looking forward to seeing um Deadpool 3 though I thought Deadpool 2 was all right wasn't bad but not as good as say the first Deadpool was but still looking forward to um Deadpool 3 and last but not least, a trailer, for, an announcement trailer was announced for the Suicide Squad for, called Suicide Squad Iska, I-S-E-K-I though. It's basically an anime take on the sort of the Suicide Squad um, franchise though. Judging by the trailer, it definitely looks interesting and it certainly has um, perked my interest and I'm looking forward to um, seeing this though. Now, no word on when it will be available, no word if it will be on in theaters or anything like that although i wouldn't be surprised if we see this go straight to you know max and everything and if it does i'm definitely will try it out when it premieres on max and all but it is something to keep an eye out especially for anime fans and also those who are fans of you know the suicide squad in general <clears throat> 
Okay, uh, with the quick my two cent now out of the way, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with the fact that is, or actually this one's about the Switch 2 or Switch 2 um, rumors. So as we get near the, as we get closer and closer to the end of 2023, we start hearing more and more speculations about, you know, rumors about a Switch 2 and everything like that. In fact, this rumor has been going around for a long, long time. And every time we hear it, it, it pretty much turns out to be false. However, that isn't always the case. Some rumors like the Switch Lite turned out to be true. And the one with the Switch having the OLED screen also turned out to be true. So while there have been some rumors about it, the next gen Switch or Switch successor, whatever it's being called, has always never um always never you know turn out to be true at all and the latest rumor we can add this to the file though although supposedly this latest rumor seemed to be coming from somebody who had leaked about metroid dread before so this could be true to a certain extent but like anything it should be taken um with a grain of salt nevertheless so according to an article from dual shocker um it reads that quote a leaker is claiming that a dev kit for the Nintendo Switch successors, often particularly referred to as Switch 2, has reached a Spanish studio. Though no addition details were provided to help add a bit of credibility to this leak, the information comes from Twitter user Nash Weedle, who did accurately report on the existence of Metroid Dread prior to the official announcement from Nintendo. Therefore, there is some level of credential to this reporting, and if true, suggests that the console's announcement is coming sooner than some may have thought. Uh, Nash Weedle, if I'm saying the name correctly, is also Spanish, which aligns with them having some knowledge of Spanish studios, not only regarding this report, but with their Metroid Dread leak. Metroid Dread was developed by Mercury System, a Spanish um, studio. With all this knowledge in mind, a reasonable assumption is that the studio, the one that alleged has a Switch 2 developer kit, is also Mercury System, but this is nothing more than a conjun conjuncture, if I'm saying that correctly. In fact, it may more likely be a different studio potentially let this developer kit information leak, as Mercury System being in such close connection with Nintendo would probably be more restrictive um, with this type of thing. A Spanish YouTuber known as Behind the Games provided further information about this report via a recent video. He stated that he spoke with Nash Weedle, who further elaborate that this unknown Spanish studio is testing a development kit with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, as Nintendo is very apt about its next console's new controller not leaking. To reiterate, all this is far from confirmation, however. If true, it seems that Nintendo is playing something special with the Switch 2 controller and that this won't simply be a slightly improved version of the current Joy-Cons. It can also mean that the current Switch Pro controller will be compatible with Switch 2, but that could just be a temporary feature specifically um, for um, de dev kits. Now, again, it is worth pointing out, um, nothing is confirmed at this time, but assuming this information is true, let's just say for argument's sake it is, some of it isn't really surprising to hear, like say like a Switch Pro controller used for this dev, dev kit. I remember hearing reports that at the time when uh, the Wii U, known as Revolution at the time, it was basically a GameCube with basically, I think, a remote um, attached um, to it, to like one of you know the GameCube slots and all. So, it wouldn't be surprising if this this is true and all. And as for whether they will announce this Switch 2 or Switch Successor, whatever they're going to call call it, though, my guess is that we might it probably will be after. I'm guess and this I could be wrong on this, but I'm guessing maybe after you know maybe after the holidays to some extent, maybe after Super Mario Wonder has come out because maybe there's some other surprises Nintendo wants for the release for the holidays and well they don't want to you know announce a new system it's like why should I buy this game for the Switch or anything like that I think most likely it will be after the holidays when they start talking about this Switch successor or whatever it's going to be though as far as what the system may or may not be I still think they're going to stick with the handheld console hybrid though because I think it would be very difficult for them to go you know back to just having a separate handheld and a separate console not to mention they've supposedly what I understand merged both those departments um, together so I still believe it will most likely still be a handheld console hybrid concept though it might there might be something different but you know knowing Nintendo 
they don't tend to pull a rabbit out of their hat. Sometimes they succeed, like they did with the Wii. Sometimes they don't, like with the Wii U's. And, and then, of course, we went to Switch, how that became a success. So we'll see what happens if this rumor turns out to be true or not. Again, I do agree some grain of salt should be taken on this rumor, but like anything though, supposedly this did come from supposedly this did come from the same person who leaked about Metroid Dread, so it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. So overall, I would say it wouldn't surprise me if this rumor turns out to be true in terms of what this dev kit might be, but like anything, it is a rumor at this time, so grain of salt um, should always be taken on this one. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with, unfortunately, the developers that worked on the Lord of the Rings Gollum game. Well, let's just say that had an impact on how they're going to be doing, dealing with video game or the gaming industry um, in general following the release of the Gollum game. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the unfortunate consequences that the Lord of the Rings Gollum game had on the studio, though. Now, when I first heard about this Gollum game, or this Lord of the Rings um, Gollum game to be exact, though, I thought the idea sounded a bit interesting and all. The idea of this being a stealth game playing as Gollum. And, all, and the fact that it was also coming to the Nintendo Switch was also kind of interesting. And I was sort of, you know what, kind of keeping an eye on it um, in general. Then the game came out, at minus the Switch version, which supposedly is still in development. And, well, the game got universally panned by everyone. It was considered to be a very bad game. So bad, I think it even overtook Redfall at the time when even when Redfall was not in the best of positions, um, to be exact. So, um, it, basically after that game came out, the developers apologized and decided to work on it to fix a lot of the bugs and glitches that were into this game. Well, now it seems as though because of this, the developers, or formal developers, have now decided to change course in terms of how they're going to be doing development of video games and all. And it seems to be they'll be more looking at it on the publishing side of it though so this development of this game really killed off any future of them developing video games um in general in an article from video game chronicles it reads that german publisher d-a-e-d-a-l-i-c entertainment has decided to end all eternal de development after the troubled launch of lord of the rings Gollum. All eternal projects, including development on another Lord of the Rings title starting in 2022, will be stopped and the company will focusing, we focus on publishing, licensing sale, and marketing going forward. In a statement to um, this German, I think, game site, I apologize if I'm not saying, I apologize if I can't read the name correctly. The publisher described the decision as a difficult turning point, but also a new beginning in the long history of Delica's um, entertainment. Um, they confirmed that at least 25 employees are affected. Management said, we value each and every member of our team and it's important to us that the transition goes as smoothly as possible. Therefore, we will support our former employees in finding new opportunities um, within our network. Um, you know, following several delays, they've released the game though. I mean, and as I mentioned shortly afterwards, um, basically they apologized for the developed underwater experience and it did not meet their expectation pledge to approve on it on future updates. So it's pretty amazing that this one game ultimately killed basically any future they have in terms of developing video games. While it doesn't sound like they'll be exiting the gaming market though, it, this certainly had a, a major, major impact. What's more interesting is that we're still waiting for the Switch version to come, although Personally, I think at this point, though, it wouldn't surprise me if we hear they've officially killed it. I mean, this is kind of similar to what we saw, I mean, back during the Wii U 360 and PS3 era when Alien Colonial Marines came out to the PS3 and 360. That game got so much negative reviews and controversies courtesy of 
Gearbox and Randy Pitchford that ultimately they killed the Wii U version altogether. It's like, why even bother considering the negative backlash cloning worries are getting? And it wouldn't surprise me if they canceled um, the Switch version. It's unfortunate, but I wouldn't be completely shocked given the negative backlash this Golem game has gotten, though. And it, it's really unfortunate that it's this one game that would kill off um, the studio, all, or at least at least somewhat kill it off. It doesn't there doesn't mean they're entering the exiting the gaming market, but they won't be developing games anymore. It's almost kind of similar to what we saw with Lumination Production with Forspoken, how that game underperformed in such a way that basically Square Enix absorbed them and now they no longer exist and anything like that. Basically because they finished up the DLC for Forspoken and everything. So yeah, very unfortunate, D. I hope these 25 folks can still find jobs, um, to be exact. It's very unfortunate, though, but I guess when you put out a really bad game, sometimes it can have a negative impact, though. We saw, it could sometimes have a negative impact, and we've seen this happen before with other studios. Um, Kingdom of Amler Re-Reckoning with big with 3H Studios, despite that game getting a positive response, it had a negative impact on the studio and they eventually went out of business for just because of one game. And well, this is apparently this studio has had a negative impact because of this one game and all. So overall, very disappointed to see this basically have an impact on the studio. Obviously they're not exiting the gaming market, but it's not gonna be development going forward. And I'm hoping those police who have affected, who have been affected by this can still find jobs. And honestly, like I said, I wouldn't be shocked if the Switch version were to get canceled and anything like that. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with, well, not so great news if you're a fan of the Banjo-Kazooie series or the F-Zero series. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of my My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a interesting comment regarding the future of the Banjo-Kazooie franchise and the F-Zero of franchise. Now, when it comes, for a lot, there are certainly a lot of dormant IPs out there that there are folks who would love to see, you know, make a comeback or have another shot or an opportunity to be exact. Um, I mean, for Rare, there is a lot of IPs that a lot of people like to see make a comeback. Banjo Kazooie certainly is one of them. Conquer, um, we're already seeing, you know, with Perfect, Perfect Dart, although there's been some back and forth where things are heading with that title. And of course, on the Nintendo side, there's always um, Kid Icarus, though. Um, we have Kid Icarus Uprising, but most would like to see a sequel or a remaster or a remake of the first game to, of course, um, F-Zero. Well, recent comments made by several of the former developers or those who make on who make who made these games are somewhat throwing some cold water on it that raises some doubt that we'll ever see either a new entry or something like that at least that's how i am interpreting it though uh, we'll start with the first one and this one comes from um, video game chronicles and the original um um original original developers are saying that they're unsure if the audience is there for a um new game though. Um, here's what some part of the article has said. Speaking to Video Game Chronicles as part of an extended interview to mark Banjo-Kazooie's 25th anniversary, a group of original Rare team members have said they're not expecting a new game anytime soon. And despite a 3 million Kickstarter and an over 1 million copies sold for their spiritual successor, Platonic Games Ukulele, um, Composer Grant Kirkhope questioned whether the audience was truly there for a new game. He said, quote, I feel like you have to get a team with the humor that we had back then, and that's hard to replicate, he said. I think Rare would be open to somebody if they found the right team, but I don't feel like that team exists. Also, I'm not convinced the audience is there. I don't feel like there are many Banjo fans I'm out there. The whole Smash Brothers thing, that was spectacular. It really was. I think all the teams that worked on that game have a tear in their eye when Banjo turned up in Smash Brothers. It was just an un unbelievable release of emotion. Seeing all those fans crying on video was heartwarming and we felt it. That was once in a lifetime event when that happened. 
but I still feel like, is there a multi-million dollar thing within Banjo-Kazooie? I'm not convinced um, there is. Grant added, I do sometimes feel we exist in a kind of Banjo-Kazooie bubble where it sounds like a great big noise, but how big is that bubble is? Um, I don't know. Outside that bu bubble, how big is that audience? Lead programmers Chris Sorderlin, if I'm saying this name correctly, echo um, Kirk Hope's statement. For a long time, there was doubt whether there was any audience for that type of game. Of course, there's some audience, but is there enough to justify the kind of scale for a game you would need now for first party, first party titles, he said. Obviously, Nintendo does well with their platforms, but that's Nintendo, and they're often the expectation to the role. That's the big question. The characters themselves we've seen in Smash Brothers, people have loved, people have loved for them, but do they love that game? And if you make a different kind a game, would you be back to a nuts and bolts scenes where there wasn't, where there wasn't what they were expecting? I'm still hopeful that something will appear, and we're all proven wrong. Um, character design Steve Myers argues that the best way to revive the Banjo Kazooie series would be vi a modern remastered, so that the right holders, Microsoft, could keep the cost down and gouge interest for players. I've said before that the way to do it, because obviously it takes so much money to create a brand new top end game, is that the sensible thing to do would be some kind of remaster to test the water to see if the audience is there. But most importantly, I think it would have to come out on a Nintendo platform um, um, as well. He, Kirk, Kirk Hope concluded that by stating that he believes well, that one studio could do justice, uh, a Banjo revival could be one of his own collaborators. I have to say, having um, worked with Ubisoft Milan on the two Mario Rabbits game, I believe they would make a great Banjo game. I've said it to them a couple of times. I really feel, feel like they got the passion that we had back in the day at Rare. I don't think I met anybody that has that passion, but I really feel they have. Meanwhile, over in terms of an in another interview with Video Game Chronicles, um, there was talks about the possibility of, you know, F-Zero or anything like that. And this came from a 30-year-old Nintendo veteran who is retired, Takahasa Imanyu, I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly, um, who was an artist behind, you know, Captain Falcon and Fox McClown. And he has his own reasons why he doesn't think... Um, F-Zero is or will be happening anytime soon, at least according to what his views are. And during the interview, someone asked them, said, quote, so do you think F-Zero gets less attention from the company than Star Fox? There hasn't been a new F-Zero game for almost 20 years now. Um, here's what he had to say, quote, I think it's because Mario Kart is Nintendo's more popular racing game and a new F-Zero would cost a fortune. My impression is that Miyamoto um, Miyamoto-san is very affectionate about um, Star Fox, though. He further that how Miyamoto is always thinking about Nintendo as a whole, so this could be another reason why he probably doesn't get much time to think about F-Zero. He also um, believes it comes down to careful consideration when reviving an IP. In the case of Metroid's Resurgent, the Western Studio of Evolve are a result of careful um, selection. So... To some degree, I kind of agree yes and no on this to a certain extent. In regards of Banjo-Kazooie, um, I agree to an extent it would be very difficult because you don't have the original developers and it's unclear if they could remake that kind of humor and everything like that. So there is truth to that. I don't disagree with that part. But at the same time, I also think that maybe you don't need to have a extremely large budget to do sort of a platforming game um, like Banjo-Kazooie. I mean, one good example would be, say, look at High Five Rush that came out um, earlier this year. That is somewhat of a of a platforming game, um, to be exact. And that did um, very well. Granted, I, I mean, yes, I know video games cost a lot of money, but granted, I think High Five Rush's budget was nowhere near the level of, say, what um, Starfield is, that kind of budget, though. So I think they could do something maybe... On, maybe on, on the same level or budget-wise, maybe close to what High Five Rush is for a Banjo-Kazooie game. And I think that would be a good pick to have on Game Pass um, in general. So I think it could work if it's done right. But at the same time, I don't disagree with some of their arguments about how it has to kind of maintain that humor, that style that the first two Banjo-Kazooie games were um, 
well known for it. So I think it is definitely possible they could pull it off, though. Um, but time will tell ultimately if that is the case. Right now, we all we already know that Perfect Dark is in development by several other studios, not Rare or anything like that. So we'll see how that game turns out. But I think a Banjo Kazooie um, could technically work. As for F Zero um, in general. Um, I mean, I get the fact that they have to take it into consideration, but I think given how we've seen some IPs do very well on the Nintendo Switch, even ones that have had a history of struggling, um, have done very well. I mean, look at the Xenoblade Chronicles series. That has done very well on the Nintendo Switch. Um, Luigi's Mansion 3 has done very well on the Nintendo Switch. Um, Metroid Dread has done very well on the Nintendo Switch. So I think it's possible an F-Zero game could technically work on the Nintendo Switch if it is done correctly. Obviously, no matter how I look at it, though, at the end of the day, it is going to be Nintendo's call. But if we if we could get something like a fourth Pikmin entry in the Pikmin series, though, I can't see how it's, how it's not out of the realm of possibility that an F-Zero game could technically work on the Nintendo Switch um, in general. So overall, very interesting perspective on the, in regards to F-Zero and Banjo-Kazooie. Um, part of me doesn't disagree with what they're saying, but part of me feels like there's an opportunity for these franchises to see a revival. For Banjo-Kazooie, I think would be a good fit to put on Game Pass. And I think an F-Zero game on the Nintendo Switch would definitely be a very good um, idea. But time will ultimately tell if that will ever happen or not, though. It is a little unfortunate we're not hearing any new entries anytime soon, but I think the potential, to, at least from my perspective, I think the potential is still there, though. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent, and this one has to do with rumors about the possibility that a remake of Assassin's Creed for Black Flag could be happening. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting report that seems to indicate that Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, a remake of that, could be in the work. Now, when it comes to the Assassin's Creed games, there have been numerous, numerous games, and the game series has had its ups and downs. For a lot of folks, a lot of views, the Assassin's Creed 2 games, like original Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, I think Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood and Revelations, to even Assassin's Creed 4 as considered by many to be sort of the best entry in the series, much like how some folks view Fallout New Vegas as the best entry in the um, Fallout series. Now, the idea of them remaking um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Assassin's Creed uh, 4 was kind of interesting um, to be exact though because some people think that game should or should not get a remake. I mean, we've seen this before with other games. Some remakes are have done very well. Others like the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition and not so much um, to be exact. Well, recently reports seem to indicate that Ubisoft is very much thinking about doing a remake of Assassin's Creed um, for Black Flag, and the response seems to be to indicate that it's the same team that is currently working on Skulls and Bones, which is falling into um, development hell um, at this time. Now, a lot of articles have covered this, but a lot of them seem to point to Kotaku as the source of this, as for what they've been told, uh, for, what they, for, for what I've been hearing though. Anyway, according to the article, it says, quote, according to two sources familiar with the plans who asked not to be named because they were not authorized to discuss them, a remake of 2013's cross-gen PS3 and 360 game, not to mention it was a Wii U game as well, is still in the earliest stage and will not be completed for at least a few years. A team at Ubisoft Singapore, one of the studios that have led development on the Assassin's Creed franchise evolving Ocean Tech, will be heavily involved in helping to modernize the Caribbean-based um, selling game. A spokesperson for Ubisoft, um, uh, Ubisoft declined to comment. At this stage, it's not clear how much of the underlying gameplay and system will grow to fit the more sprawling, open-world RPG mold of recent big-budget Assassin's Creed games like Odyssey and Valhalla. But given Black Flag's emphasis on ship-to-ship -ship combat, 
one of the most popular aspects of the game, there's a lot of room to turn a new version of the game into something more dramatic than a simple next-gen remaster on the PS5 and Xbox Series um, X and S. Um, at the same time, Ubisoft has still yet to launch Skull and Bones, its cursed blockbuster live service pirate game that was first announced back in 2017. As Kotaku previously reported, it originally grew out of a Black Flag expansion only to spend, um, year, so it spent years continually changing shape and suffering from eternal politics, confusion, and bureaucracy within Ubisoft Singapore and the larger company. It was supposed to launch last fall only to get delayed by two more times without a new release date. So for me, I'm very um, mixed on this announcement though. On one hand, though, if done correctly, though, a remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag would certainly not be a bad thing. That was probably one of, certainly one of my favorite entries into the um, Assassin's Creed series, um, to be exact. So I think it certainly could work if it is done right. But on the other hand, this is Ubisoft we're talking about. This is the same studio that focus on almost making every game open world or live service. This is the same studio that tried to remake Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, only now that, after showing the first trailer and the amount of backlash that got, they took the game that was originally handed by one development team and brought it back to the folks who originally worked on the original Sands of Time and it sort of rebooted that. Um, rebooted that game though, and who knows how long the development's gonna be take on that one. Um, this is also the same studio with, of course, Skulls and Bones, given that has fallen into development hell and Beyond Good and Evil 2, which has also fallen into development hell. So I don't have a lot of confidence on this one to be exact. I could be wrong and Ubisoft could surprise us, but given where the situation Ubisoft is in right now, I have my serious doubts about if this game is really going to be as successful as some people make it sound like it is or not though i mean time will ultimately tell if that is going to be um the case but right now my hopes are not really high on this one um to be exact but we'll have to wait and see maybe they'll surprise us maybe it will actually turn out to be as good as maybe not as bad as some people thought it would be but it is Ubisoft, so we'll have to wait and see. So overall, very mixed on this announcement. I want the, the idea sounds impressive. It sounds promising, but given Ubisoft and how they've handled some of their games, including them trying to remake Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, I unfortunately have my doubts um, at this very moment. Again, things could change, but for net right now, I seriously have my doubts on this remake. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about this rumor about this Spanish development team possibly having a dev kit for the Switch 2 or Switch successor? Do you think this rumor is true? Do you think this rumor is false? Do you think that we might hear an announcement about a Switch successor or Switch 2 anytime soon, to be exact? What are your thoughts about this Gollum game and the impact it had on this development team, though? Do you think this development team absolutely deserved it? Do you think it's unfortunate, um, to be exact, though? Um, what Have you tried the Gollum game out in any shape or any form? What do you think about some of the comments made in regards of a, another Banjo-Kazooie or F-Zero um, entry, though? Are you disappointed with some of the statements that were made by some of the former developers, though? Do you think a new Banjo-Kazooie game could could work? And do you think it would be an idea choice to put on Game Pass? Do you think an, a new F-Zero game could actually work? And do you think it would be great to see it on the Nintendo Switch? And what are your thoughts about this rumor about the possibility that Assassin's Creed 4 Black Fag could get the remake treatment? Do you think this is a good idea for them to get the remake treatment though? Do you think it's a bad idea though? Do you have confidence that Ubisoft can pull it off? Or do you feel after how we saw the first trailer of Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time remake, you don't really have a lot of confidence um, at all on, on the possibility of a remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag? 
Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree with what I said? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon or Steam Labs. Um, links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye.